Hey, what's up, guys? This is Chad with Open Source Systems. This is Screencast 007. Uh, it's a Kali, Linux Kali install on VirtualBox. I got to tell you, I am extremely excited about this screencast. Um, the, the previous six, you know, were pretty basic. This, we're definitely taking it up a notch. Uh, we are installing Kali, which is, uh, well, if, if you found the screencast, you probably know what Kali is. You just want to get it installed or looking for some help. But for those that don't, Kali is, uh, it's, it's kind of an enhancement of an old distribution called Backtrack, which is Linux for pen testers, Linux for hackers, essentially. It comes with a lot of really interesting tools for network reconnaissance, uh, exploitation, uh, shell coding development, forensics analysis, things like that. So a lot of really cool tools. They just pretty much bundle all these open source tools up into a Linux distro based on Debian called uh, Kali. Now, I think I pronounced that right. I don't know. But anyways, uh, K-A-L-I, okay? And it's fairly new. Uh, this is uh, 2014, January two, 2014. And so Kali is a, is a pretty new Linux distribution. And I'm really excited to get uh, get it installed, show you guys how to get it working. Next step after this screencast is going to be uh, creating a virtual cyber lab. So we're going to start networking these virtual machines together, getting them talking to each other and really starting to uh, to experience this and, and see what this is all about. So like I said, really excited. Uh, let's get started. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to open up a uh, web browser here. We're going to go to Kali or we're just going to search for Kali and Google. And you can see here, right here, Kali.org is the website. We can go there and browse around, but we're interested in downloading. So we're gonna to go to the download section over here. The current version is 106, a 64-bit ISO. We're gonna use that one. So click that link there and it's going to download. Now you'll notice uh, it says it's gonna take about an hour. I think it's running about 500K a second. Uh, it depends. I've caught it on bad times where I'm only getting like 50k download speed. It seems to be kind of off and on. Uh, if you're getting really bad download speeds, you can either try a mirror or try later. Uh, sometimes I was saying it was getting 24 hours to download. But anyway, so we're downloading it now. I'm going to go ahead and cut to the next scene after we download uh, and we'll begin the install. All right, great. Hopefully you got your ISO downloaded now. You can see mine is here. If I select it, it's about, uh, about three gigs, so expect it to be about that size or exactly that size. Uh, you can see here Kali Linux, the version 1.0.6, uh, AMD 64. So do note that this is a 64-bit version of the Kali Linux distribution. Okay. So as I stated before, this is a Linux distro based on Debian. I'll show you why that's important here in a second. But now that we're starting to get into the security world, uh, security is going to be of more importance. So we need to approach things with more security consciousness going forward. Uh, now, the first thing we need to do now that we've downloaded this ISO before we even install it is we need to verify this ISO. The way we're going to do that is we're going to uh, perform a SHA hash sum against our new downloaded ISO and we're going to compare it with what the website says it should be. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do that. So if you're running a Mac like I am, you can go in the right here, uh, upper right hand corner, type terminal and open up a terminal window. Uh, this will be, uh, this will open up here for you. Uh, you can see I'm in my download section or uh, folder and you can see that my ISO image is here in my download folder. Okay, so this is just a file here. Uh, like I said, this is a little more advanced. So the pace is gonna be uh, kicked up a little bit. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to run a command called SHA sum and we're going to run it against the Kali Linux ISO that we just downloaded. So we're going to run this SHA sum against the ISO. This is going to compute the, the sum. It's going to give us this number and we're going to, when it computes this number, which will take a few minutes, we're going to compare that number with this number here. Okay, so it's already done. Uh, 281DDB3. 281DDB3. So I usually compare like the last four or five, the first four or five and the last four or five F8, A22. So that looks good. That uh, we can we can with fairly good certainty uh, say that this number is the same one as this number here uh, without going, one, um, you know, each one, one by one. So I'd say that looks good. We looks like we have a good ISO image downloaded and we are ready for installation. So I'm gonna close this terminal window out. I don't think we need that anymore. Go ahead and just kind of clean things up a little bit. Uh, 
I'll also probably get rid of this. I don't think we need that anymore either. Uh, okay, so we do need our VirtualBox manager. First thing we're gonna do as always when we create a, a Linux uh, install is create new, okay? This is gonna be called Kali 1.0.6. And I do like to keep the version numbers just so I can make sure. Before, uh, VirtualBox was able to tell what we're downloading, but now it's not too sure. So we need to go ahead and tell it that we are installing Linux. And as I stated before, we're installing the Debian 64-bit version of Linux. So if you're running, if you download the 64-bit, make sure to choose Debian 64-bit. Otherwise, you'll probably have trouble downloading. Okay, so for this, we're going to choose, uh, you know, before I would do four gigs of memory, about a quarter. I'm actually going to do a half since I have uh, more tools, a little more advanced features that I'm doing here. So I'm going to do 8192, which is half the memory that I have. Uh, we are going to create a virtual hard drive, which we're going to do the next step after we hit the create button. Okay, so here we're going to choose the file path for this virtual hard drive. Uh, and we're going to put it in my dev VM Kali 106 folder. And we're going to call it Kali 106. Okay. So we look pretty good there. Only thing we're going to do is modify how big this hard drive, virtual hard drive is. We're going to make it 100 gigabytes. It is going to be a VDI. And we're going to keep it dynamically allocated. So we're going to create that. Okay, we should be good to go. The only thing we have to do now is make our virtual CD-ROM drive point to our ISO so that it boots from that ISO uh, like we did with the CentOS install. So we click Settings, click Storage, and then we are going to select our virtual CD-ROM drive and we're going to tell it to point to the Kali Linux ISO that we downloaded in our Downloads folder. Say OK. And we are going to boot. So this is gonna boot the Kali ISO. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click inside here. This is a uh, keyboard-based install, but it's actually, they've done a really good job. It's, it's very simple to install. We're just gonna go down to install here. English, we're gonna choose the United States, American English. And it's going to load what it needs to load. Okay, so it asks us to enter the host name for the system. Uh, we're gonna call it Kali, but we're gonna keep it all uppercase, just uh, same, uh, same style that we've done for our Windows machines. Click continue. For our domain name, we can just go ahead and keep that uh, blank, just hit, just hit the down arrow key and go to continue. Okay, for root password, go ahead and put in a root password. Now for Kali, we are going to log in as root, which uh, usually you don't want to do. But for this one, we are. We're, we're going, in later screencasts, we're going to create user accounts and, and things to secure our install. Okay, we'll select our time zone. We're in the eastern time zone of the United States. Okay, so for this part, our partitioning method, we're going to say guided, use entire disk. Uh, so we're gonna go pretty much just the standard basic install here. It uh, notices our 100 gig hard drive that we created. So we're gonna say okay. We're gonna say all files in one partition. We really don't need to separate out our partitions since this is a virtual machine. Uh, we're going to say finish partitioning and write changes to disk. So this is our partitioning our hard drive. Uh, write changes to disk. Click the left arrow, make sure you select yes. Okay, great, so once you get all the files copied over, uh, it's gonna ask you if you wanna use a network mirror uh, to, um, to, to, make, to download the newest, latest updates of packages and things. We wanna say yes to that. We always wanna install updates when we can. Okay, I don't use an HTTP proxy, so we're gonna just leave that blank. Okay, so once you get to this screen, it's gonna ask you about the Grub bootloader. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and say yes to that since we're running a virtual hard drive. Okay, so it looks like our installation was successful. We'll go ahead and continue that. All right, so it's gonna restart. Don't hit anything, just let the computer restart or your virtual machine. Uh, it's going to go ahead and now boot from the uh, from the image that we just installed. 
So it is now booting from your virtual hard drive, uh, not the CD-ROM. Okay, great. So once you got to this point, you are officially there. So now we, we successfully installed the Kali distro. It's, it was pretty easy. We're gonna close that little alert there. Click the other button for username. We're gonna type root. And then for password, we're gonna use our, our root password that we created. So now we're uh, essentially logging in and uh, as root into our new Kali Linux distro. So there we go. Uh, Kali does support out of the box mouse pointer integration, which is nice, unlike the CentOS install. But one thing it doesn't support yet is the ability to resize the screen. You'll notice as I make it smaller or larger, uh, the the resolution in our virtual machine just stays the same. So we're gonna fix that by installing the guest editions. Okay, so before we go any farther though, we're going to log out, shut down our machine, and create a snapshot. So we're gonna say yes, go ahead and shut down. Okay, so once the machine is powered off, we can go ahead and select it, go to snapshots, and then we're gonna create a snapshot called vanilla install. Uh, fresh vanilla install of Kali 1.0.6. Say okay. Okay, great. Now we can go ahead and start the machine back up. We're going to log in, and this time we're gonna install the guest additions for our Kali distro. Uh, again, go ahead and ignore this, just don't touch anything. Our Kali Linux will start on its own. We're gonna go ahead and just close these alerts again. Okay, beautiful. Once you're here, go ahead and log in as root again. Okay, so in order to install our guest editions, we first need to install the, uh, the Linux headers package. So to do that, go up to this uh, little icon here. We're gonna open up a terminal window, and this is our command line. We're gonna go ahead and update our packages, expand that a little bit. We're gonna update our packages, install, install what we need to get. Uh, CentOS is a Red Hat based uh, Linux distro, which uses yum. Uh, Debian uses a program called apt-get for its package management. So we're gonna do apt-get update and apt-get install dash y Linux headers. And then here we're gonna put a little bit of uh, shell magic, uname dash r. That is just gonna pull that number for us. Uh, before we copied and pasted that in our, in our CentOS install, this time we're just gonna go ahead and let, let Linux do that for us. Like I said, this is a little more advanced tutorial, so we're gonna just speed things up. All right, great. So once we go through that install process, now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to insert our guest editions. We're gonna go to devices, insert the guest edition CD image. Okay, once this box comes up, we're gonna say cancel, don't run it. Now what we have to actually copy our executable uh, in this case, where before with CentOS, we could run it straight from the CD-ROM. Uh, it's not the case this time. We actually have to copy it. So we're going to run copy media and we're going to say CD-ROM and we're going to say slash VBox Linux editions. And we're going we're gonna to copy that over to temp. Okay, so once we copy that, we're going to CD into temp and we're going to make sure that our, uh, our installer is executable. So we're going to say chmod and we're going to say 755 VBox Linux editions, and then we're gonna run it. Now you notice here that it goes ahead and builds our module and it will install it. Great, okay. So once our guest editions are installed, we have to restart our, our, our virtual machine. Go ahead and type reboot here at the command line and hit enter. This is gonna go ahead and shut down and restart your virtual machine. Once we're restarted, we should have guest editions up and running. Okay, beautiful. Once you're here, you're ready to log in to your new Kali install. So log in as root here. Okay, so now we're gonna go and test our guest editions, make sure that that worked. Sweet, looks like we're good to go. Okay, great. So this right here is a good foundation for you. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and eject this CD-ROM. Okay, so now that that is a ejected, we're gonna go ahead and shut down our virtual machine by going over here at the upper right, shut down. And we are going to again create another snapshot. 
this snapshot is going to be of our guest editions install. Okay, beautiful. Once we're powered off, go ahead and select Kali. Make sure you're in the snapshots tab, select snapshot. We're going to call this guest additions installed. Awesome. Okay, so that wraps up this screencast. Hopefully that was uh, a, a, a more of a, a quick pace because as we progress through the screencasts, as you watch more, we're gonna be doing more and more things and it's gonna be getting a little bit faster because there's a lot more stuff that we need to cover. Kali is a, a really great Linux distro. It's very popular, so you should receive a lot of support for that. If you do need support, feel free to reach out to us, OSS ys.com or can you can join our community uh ossys.com slash community also reach out reach out to us on facebook we post a lot of cool stuff on there and twitter facebook.com slash open source sys or twitter.com slash open source sys uh, you can reach us there as well so thank you very much for watching uh, we look forward to providing more screencasts here in the future again i'm really excited about this Kali install and um, thank you very much